I want to talk uh, for just a few minutes, perhaps a few minutes, on dealing with devils. Now, I can't say I've dealt with hundreds of them. But there's been certain times in my life when I seem to have been minding my own business and not looking to cast out devils where I've had to just take authority and do something about the situation. And one of the first occasions I can remember uh, where this happened, we were having a Bible study with two or three young people in a friend's living room. And I was reading from Ephesians chapter 4 and explaining where Paul is talking about there is one God, one faith, one baptism, one Lord, and so on. And I was reading down, and when I got to the part that says one God, suddenly there's this strange sound coming from a young man sat on the settee. And he had claimed to be, I believe, a born-again believer, as far as we knew. Anyway, he's making this strange noise, and when we looked at him, there were the two young men in the room, and I turned around myself, and I could see that all his veins were sticking out of his neck. And his face was going red and then kind of purple. And in this strange-sounding voice coming out of him, he simply said, I am being crucified like this. And his hands was like this and he was going, I am being crucified with Christ like this. And all his face red and his veins sticking out. And I thought, no, no, this is not, this is not right. We're not Roman Catholic mystics. Um, being crucified with Christ doesn't mean that you're, body goes into contortions and you have some kind of strange experience like this. Anyway, the other two young believers, they were only young men, I mean, 16, 17, maybe 18 years old, looking really shocked. And I says, well, if you don't think you can hack this, I said, just go in the kitchen and pray and I'll deal with this. You might think perhaps I should have had them in there to see what was happening, but I think that... Uh, they were better off in the kitchen praying, which they, they did anyway. Anyway, this young man, he was, he must have been maybe 15 and a half years old at that point, but he was very tall, he was nearly six foot, he was a, a big young man. And he stood up and he went like this with his hands and this kind of roaring noise came out. And then I simply just touched him on the forehead like that and says, no, you don't. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, sit down. And the amazing thing was I had such a peace. I didn't have to shout, raise my voice, scream the name of Jesus 10 or 20 times over and over again. And he sat down on the settee. And this voice <clears throat> spoke out of him and said, I am the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And I knew that this was false prophecy. I knew it was a false thing coming out of that mouth. I knew it. And I said, oh no, you are not. You are not the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. And then the demon got clever. The wicked spirit tried to reason and the spirit in him spoke out and said it's because my voice doesn't sound right meaning the tone of his voice that you don't believe I am the Father Son and Holy Spirit and I just said Shh, no you're not but you'll have to come out just as I'm speaking on this recording here I said, but you will have to come out. I said, what is your name? Oh, no, you don't need. 
I said, what is your name? And the spirit evidently had a name, and the name was Avatari. Avatar, or Avatari. And I thought, how strange. I said, well, Avatari, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, you have to come out. Oh, no, no, he said, like this. But he wasn't screaming and shouting at this, but so I said, yes, you have to come out. And again, I just put my hand on his head very gently and said, come out in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Nazareth. And he just slowly and gently laid down on the settee. And within a minute or two, less than that, he just got up and he looked at me, his eyes were different. And he said, what happened? I said, a wicked spirit just came out of you. Oh, he said, oh, am I still saved? Am I still saved? Am I still born again? He says, I better go home and pray and make sure I am born again. And uh, the other two young men, I called back, I went in the kitchen and said, it's fine, it's been dealt with, it's okay. Now, why would like to bring your attention to and I'm amazed with this but then I shouldn't be but you see I was reading one I got to the point in the scripture where it said one God and this thing manifested and it also tried to tell me that it was the Father Son and Holy Spirit you see the demons don't like to acknowledge that there is only one God. They want to think of themselves as gods, but they're no gods at all. But it was a revelation to me. And I thought, there is only one God. There's not three gods or two gods, there's one God. And this wicked spirit came out with this gobbledygook. I am the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. Now, you can ponder that and think on it, see that. I taught in a Bible college in Scotland. It was only for a year. But during that time, there were some students who manifested demonic spirits. And again, I wasn't seeking these <laughs> encounters at all. One occasion I was walking down the corridor, minding my own business, going to my room, when a new student just looked at me and said, in a really terrible, rough manner, And you! I can't stand you! I hate you! I just looked at him, oh my goodness. And I just went off to my room. I'd never even met the person before. So sometimes these things would happen. And I didn't deal with that situation. But there are other situations I had to deal with. I mean, people manifested, coming to my room just for prayer and falling off the end of a seat. And uh, one, one young person fell off a chair in the room and fell onto the floor and started laughing. And of course, there'd been a lot at that time about laughing in the spirit. And I sat watching this and I thought, hmm, and this laughing started, but suddenly it went from laughing and there was this laugh, ah, ha, ha, like, you know, laughing, and then all of a sudden was this, ah, you know, like this terrible noise and rolling about on the floor. And I'm looking at this and I thought, we were just having a time of prayer. There was no mention of demons or anything like that. Anyway, so again, I had to deal with this person and pray with this person. Anyway, later on, it was discovered that uh, this particular student had um, a girlfriend who was a witch and he'd been fornicating and having sex with this woman who was a witch and he was claiming to be a believer. So there are these things that do happen. There was a time when I was in a Christian coffee bar 
in stone away. It's no longer no longer there. Again, simply having a conversation with another sister in the Lord that was serving the coffees that day. And then there was this woman that was sat across. And all of a sudden, she just looked at me and this voice came out of her and says, I know you, I know you, I've seen you, I've seen you before. And I'm like, what's this? And Anne looked at me and smiled and she said, I've seen you, I've seen you, oh, like this. And stood up. So we went over to speak to her and then I realised this wasn't her speaking. And whatever was in her recognised who I was. So anyway... So we goes into the kitchen, we, we takes her into the kitchen away because there were other people in the coffee bar, went into the kitchen and I began to speak strongly in tongues. You see, now very often people will say, oh, pray in tongues, you know, when there's a demon. And just, the, just I prayed in tongues, not realising that the demon could also speak in tongues. So this demon spoke out of her in this really loud tongue, drowning out me trying to pray. I stopped. And I simply quietly said, No, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, come out. And suddenly her head just fell and she just burst into tears and she was released. Now, that doesn't happen every week and I'm not expecting it to happen every week but I'm sharing this with you because in dealing with devils we have to realize how subtle they are and if I had perhaps had a Roman Catholic background I might have questioned what was happening to the young boy when the demon spoke out of him and said, ah, oh, I've been crucified with Christ. You see, if you'd have been brought up, it'd be very subtle, because then you could think, well, maybe he's having the stigmata. But by the very fact, the very fact that it had a name and it came out of him, proves that was not the Spirit of God. So these things are very subtle. They're very subtle. They will try to imitate God. They will try to imitate prophecy. I am the Father, Son and Holy Spirit. But I instinctively knew this was wrong. Why? Because of what had taken place first. Where, you know, his whole veins were sticking out of his neck and it, it looked as though he was choking with whatever it was. So you see, that's why scripture says, test to the Spirit. Test the spirits. So there are spirits that imitate and say they are the Father, Son and Holy Ghost. But what made this spirit manifest was that declaration of scripture. It was a Bible study. I wasn't saying I declare and decree that there is only one God. We are simply reading the scripture. And when I came to the word, one God, that thing manifested. Selah, think on these things.